Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Pisces is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Pisces, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there is the holy fool. Very fun, very fun, very cool way to begin a reading. Let's put that into some context, all right? See what else we have. Let's see if this fool has any uh, sense of direction. Oh yeah, I can see that it does. Uh, I can see that it does. It's, it's following the sun, right? Um, kind of like a moth to a flame. It's being, being drawn to source, and I love that. Yeah, a lot of interesting energy here today. Okay, uh, let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Weight Tarot. And this is just one card that we select randomly. We're not going to look at this card until the very end of the reading. And we'll put our alien friend Simon right there on top. You can call him Mork for short. Um, and hopefully that card, you know, hopefully it'll tie everything together and give us that confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. All right. So let's look at what we have here. We've got major, major, major. We have our trinity of major arcana, which I really love to see. We have some fire. We have some water. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have quite a bit of air. Right? Even the fool is pure air. Um, now, the air can choose to go in any of these directions, I think. Right? Here's the, the two of swords at the end, kind of talking about a, a choice or a decision that has been made or still maybe needs to be made uh, as far as where this fool is going. Uh, we could go backwards uh, to something, but I feel like we're leaving, this, we're leaving this ten of swords. Right? We've completed this phase of our work, and we're moving forward. So we're moving forward to the dawn of a new day. This is the golden dawn in the east. This is the new beginning. This is the new life. This is the old life. There is some confusion. There is some struggle on the path, but this is where we're headed, right? We have some other things to deal with when we get to the path of the serpent. Now, I do notice that the only earth we have is that night of pentacles. So that's going to be very important energy. But first, let's talk a little bit about the fool. The fool is pure divine energy, pure consciousness. I was going to say the fool is surrounded by, by divine energy, but no, the fool is divine energy, right? It's, it's above it and in it and through it and all around it. Um, and I feel like this is this is a sense of freedom that we feel initially when we get out of that Ten of Swords situation. Yeah. There is a loss of any kind of worry. It's a carefree attitude, right? Just kind of, just zenned out, just blissed out. Don't even, nothing to worry about, right? We know that is a state that doesn't last, right? We may experience it briefly, but then back down to business, we have to, we have to take care of our responsibilities. But this is that momentary freedom, that momentary loss of any worry, any doubt, any concern, right? It's the fool that just has the dog nipping at its heels, has the cliff in front of them. In this moment, I don't care. I know what's behind me. I know what's in front of me. But right now in this moment, it's not, it's not worrisome. Yeah. The thing about the fool, though, is that the fool wants to stay in that state permanently. The fool has the tendency to lose all sense of self, all sense of self-consciousness, right? Not in an anxious kind of way, but with being aware that we are 
at least for all intents and purposes, separate from the universe, right? We're separate from the dog nipping at our heels. We're separate from the cliff that is before us. Now, we might unite with that ravine, but we don't, don't necessarily want to. We may unite in consciousness with that dog nipping at our heels, but we don't necessarily want to. The fool is in that permanent state of just being so blissed out that they're unaware, right? Um, and that's something that we need to be cautious of because the fool could also be the sage, but the fool could also just be a fool, right? So um, I think what's going on here, if we look at the cards, I think we're getting out of this Ten of Swords situation. I think that we're breaking free from whatever this restriction was. And I really, I do feel like divine energy is surrounding you right now. You have uh, this, um, you kind of have the, uh, the, the Technicolor dream coat around you with this fool here. Now, we don't want to get lost in this. We don't want to make it a cloak of invisibility, but we can wear this robe for a minute, right? That's okay. That feels good. You deserve it because you got out of this. I think it took a lot of struggle. Here's the five of wands to get out of this. Now, this could have been a work situation. It could be a relationship in the home. It could be, um, it could be a romantic thing. It could be really anything. But it was... It was occupying your mind in such a way that you didn't feel free, right? It's something that you probably had to think about and worry about and struggle against every moment of every day. But now, now we've done it, right? Whatever the mechanism was of this freedom, I think it's a mental freedom more than anything because we do see so much air energy. And because the fool is kind of this freedom of mind, right? It's kind of like forgetting we have a body, forgetting we have emotions. It's just, it's just consciousness, right? Expanding outward indiscriminately. And that's a good thing. But if it's indiscriminate and if it's expanding in every direction, it could end up back here. It could end up up here. It could be down here. What we really want is a little bit of direction. We want to Harness this, this freedom and this energy and this consciousness. Give it some vision, right? Here's the Knight of Pentacles. This is fire and earth. So the fire and the earth can take that pure air energy, that pure consciousness, and can, can paint a picture on it, you know? It's like this... This consciousness is almost a, a blank slate. It's kind of like your life is a blank slate now. The fool does mean new beginnings. It means transcending a situation that wasn't working for us anymore. Right? So in that pure consciousness blank slate, we're going to use the fire and the earth to paint a picture. What are we doing? What are we looking for? What do you envision in the distance? This is the force that, well, that draws the picture of the best life. You know, when we get the Ten of Pentacles, we say, that's the picture of your best life. That's the, the postcard from the future showing you your best life, you know. This is the artist and the genius behind that postcard. This, this has to be you. So we need to really have the vision, not so much have the plan. Yes, there is a lot of air energy. We need to make some plans, of course. But you need to have the vision. And what you're seeing is this, right? This is the creative force. This is different than the Ten of Pentacles, right? The Ten of Pentacles is more detailed. There's, well, there's ten pentacles. And uh, it's a description with details uh, about what your best life is going to contain. But what we're moving forward to is this creative expression here. We have the vision and then we kind of step into it and we begin to realize it. We begin to create it. We begin to paint the picture. This is, this is the artist, right? This is the musician. This is, uh, this is Apollo. Yeah. Um, so this is you stepping into that creative life, 
right? Where you're the composer of the music, you're the painter of the picture. We still don't know what the music's going to sound like. That's Ten of Pentacles. We don't know what the picture or the postcard is going to be. That's the Ten of Pentacles. But you're stepping into your role as the artist. You're the visionary. Now you're doing the work. And I feel as if you are discovering discovering this freedom, but in a different way than the fool, right? Because the fool is kind of unaware. It's a, a lack of consciousness, right? Kind of a foolishness. Um, it's kind of a, a permanent state of bliss or nirvana, which is, is, sounds good. Um, this is kind of the opposite because this is enlightened consciousness. This is a consciousness that is still here in the real world, but it's still also in the spirit world in in that state of nirvana it's a it's a it's a functional nirvana right so this is that concentration that puts you on the path that you're in that orbit now i wish we had a, a world or universe card here to go with this that's all right this is the sun that gives light and life and love to the environment to grow that best life to take that postcard Right? And see, okay, this is what I'm doing. And then we're shining light on it. We're doing it. We're painting the picture. We're growing the seeds. We're giving love and life to our self, to our environment, to the world. And that best life is growing around us. Right? We kind of maybe need a, an empress. Maybe we need like a nine of pentacles here. But you're the source of this. You're the one that's responsible for creating this best life. So I, I do feel like there is this divine energy around you. I feel like we have this connection with source internally that is creating enough power that we can resist the, the crushing gravity of the external world, right? That's the, the equilibrium of a star where there's enough power being generated internally to withstand gravity. And I think that gravity is well, a lot of this stuff over here, and well, a lot of this stuff, I mean, it's pretty much everything else, um, except for the major arcana. But we'll talk about the five of wands now, because this was your struggle to get out of this situation. So deep down within you, you have a competitive spirit. You have this fighting uh, spirit in you. I don't think it really likes to come out. I don't think it makes itself known very often, but when it does, it's very strong, very assertive, and it can overcome any challenge. A lot of the time, the five of wands is talking about, hmm, you're going to get into a fight, right? The fights, you're going to, a fight's going to come to you and you're going to have to do battle. I like to look at this card as your ability to be the one bringing the fight, right? Right? You see a situation in your life that we, we don't want, that is restrictive, that is as bad as a Ten of Swords is. Well, really, I should say, the Ten of Swords is us escaping this prison here. Because of the Nine, the Nine would be here in between, Eight, Nine, and then the Ten is us getting out. The Ten is, I've had enough, I'm exiting the situation. <clears throat> it's bad enough that we're in this Eight of Swords prison, but then there's this implied Nine of Swords here, which is all the bad stuff that goes on in prison. We've had enough. We're getting out. Hopefully not literal prison, but you know what I mean. It's a mental thing. It's energetic. So the Ten really is the escape, you know, more than it is the, uh, the situation itself. Okay. We don't really see what the situation is. Because the Nine of Swords that's in between here is just implied. It, I don't actually have a Nine of Swords. So I'm assuming that the Nine of Swords is here, and that's really, that's really the bad, the last straw that leads us to needing to escape. Right? It's the last thing that, that happens. It's the straw that, that broke the camel's back, and the camel's uh, getting out of there. And the Five of Wands is your ability to fight for what you believe in, to fight for your, fight for your rights, right? Well, Bob Marley action. Um, to, to fight for yourself. To fight for your safety and your security. 
Now, I'm not advocating any kind of violence, uh, peaceful methods, right? But you can assert yourself. You can struggle with this situation, which again, feels like it's a mental thing. A lot of air here feels like it's, um, I think it has to do with a relationship, obviously with someone outside, maybe a company, maybe, you know, but it's primarily a mental struggle. You know, something that we have to overcome within ourselves via a five of wands. We, something that we are wrestling with. And it could be that we're wrestling with this idea of, you know, is this, a, a, is, it, is this the proper place for us? Or is my genius, my creativity, my path this way? So I feel like we're kind of wrestling with... Um, maybe staying in place. I don't think it's an option, really. I think the decision's been made. But I think there was a decision that had to be made. You had to wrestle with, with the other air energies. Here comes uh, our TT cat. She heard that there was, uh, was going to be a fight, and she wanted to come and cheer you on. You know, um, I, I don't think a literal fight. I think this is your ability to, uh, to take the decision that you've made and to assert yourself, to push yourself in that direction, to get it done. Yeah. And it's really paying off. And I think you have this divine energy around you with the Fool and with the Sun card and with this Cancer energy that we have here, this Chariot. But uh, let's talk about the Eight of Swords for a, a brief moment. This is pretty straightforward. This is the idea that we don't want to be restricted. And maybe that's what we were wrestling with is, am I in a situation that's holding me back? I don't know. Could it be? We're overanalyzing it. We're wrestling with this. I think it finally, that last straw happens, right? The nine, and then it, it, we make our escape. So I think the decision's been made, but I think the origin of it was this restrictive situation and we're just, we're, we're struggling with it. We're, we're wrestling with this idea that this is holding me back, right? And yes, I think that you decided it was indeed holding you back. The Eight of Swords is very much our own thinking holding us back, right? I don't think anyone literally is restricting you from being your best self, being your own creative genius, your own artist, um, the artist of your own life, I guess. I think it was our own thought process that was holding us back, but we've struggled with it. We've made our escape. We got to this fool. The fool is like a prisoner who, who is, escapes from prison. And of course, I'm not advocating that. Um, but it's someone with that newfound sense of freedom and has not a care in the world. It's only a little while later, maybe a few hours, a few days, hopefully. They realize, okay, I've got some responsibilities. I've got to start, I've got to start planning, you know, what I'm going to do. It's like when I... Um, when I was hospitalized, I had a liver transplant. I was, uh, I was in the ICU for a month. And when I finally was released from the hospital, um, you know, I had a cane, I couldn't walk, I had a liver transplant. Um, I felt this sense of freedom, like, like, I could do, like I could do anything. Like I had not a care in the world. I was just so happy to be outside, right, to be free again. Um, that wore off eventually when I realized, okay, I've got to build my strength back up. I have to take my medication. I have to go see the I have appointments and, you know, lab work and all this other stuff. So we start then, we start thinking of what's my future going to be, right? What vision do I have for the next few years? You know, and, and this is what we, this is where we are. Anyway, uh, we're going to move to the path of the serpent now. And as I do this, I would like to remind you to please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. All right. It helps us out with the algorithm, apparently. So, um, First card here is, uh, well, the first and the last are air energies. This is a knight of swords. This is now, I think, the ability to really put these plans into action. This vision right? This is the fire of earth. This is the fire of air. So we've, we've painted the mental picture and now we're ready to get a move on. 
but we've got to cross this swamp here first. All right. And this is kind of the, um, this is the, the relationship with the environment. This is the timing of it all, right? So this is very, very interesting because we're talking about making this escape. I think the decision's already been made, but maybe we haven't actually done the escaping yet. You know what I mean? Maybe with this card, it's saying that, look, now's the time for you to actually see things for what they are and, and walk away, actually do the physical movement, right, to get out of this. This is kind of that swamp. This is that, this is the comfortable place that we might be, knowing it's kind of bad for us, but finding it difficult to leave. Um, and I think that, I think that's very telling because it is mostly air energy here. This is a lot of thought, a lot of vision, a lot of expectation. We made the decision, but maybe we haven't actually taken the steps yet, right? Maybe this card is here to say, hey, it's time now to get a move on. All of this thinking and talking and planning is okay. Let's actually move. Let's actually take our chariot out of this swamp. Maybe we've been stuck in this mud and it's time to go. Interestingly, again, the chariot is in the position of what we don't want. Yeah, this is the position of what we don't want. We don't want to get a move on. We, part of us at least, kind of likes our chariot stuck in the mud, right? We kind of want to just indulge in this, right? Because having that kind of freedom, that vision, being the artist of your own life, that's a pretty heavy responsibility. We have to overcome this. This is the inertia. This is the, the law that says a body at rest will stay at rest, right? Until acted upon by an outside force. Well, or an inside force, right? Uh, so this is our inertia. We're saying, well, we're already stuck in the mud. Let's just enjoy the mud. This is what we have to get over. And I think this is the decision <clears throat> that we've made, the Two of Swords at the end. This is the decision, sorry, my voice is, uh, I'm getting a little croaky. <clears throat> the decision has been made to get this chariot going, okay? These are the little, the pry bars that we might have to put under the wheels of the chariot to kind of lift it out of the mud. And this is the willpower. This is our mental fortitude that says, I've made a decision. I am going to follow through with it and I'm going to get it done. So I think a lot of this was an intellectual, spiritual exercise. But now the universe is saying, get, get going. We've thought about this enough. We're, uh, we're burning daylight here, right? So the chariot energy, it's, it's what we don't want, but it is, it is what we need, right? It's time to see through our inertia, to see through the illusory comforts that we have around us. This is the water that kind of goes on top of this and says, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. It feels kind of good. We have to see through this. We have to move our chariot. We have to be so firm and resolved in our mind, in our wills, that we will move steadily along and will continue to make that decision at every, every turn, every turn of these wheels. We're making the decision to keep going. All right. Well, let's look at the mystery card now. I'm curious what Simon has for us today. Thank you, Simon. For the mystery card... I said before I would like to see maybe a nine of pen, nine or a ten of pentacles, maybe an empress, something that shows um, we're growing this life, that we have stepped into our role as the artist of our own life, as this solar energy, and we are taking responsibility for our life, for our orbit, for our path, and um, that we are growing this abundance around us. So. Maybe even an eight of pentacles would be, would be fine, right? I'm not too picky. I'm not too demanding. Um, yeah, I think, I think an eight or a nine of pentacles would be, would be okay, right? 
Let's see what we have. Aha, no. Empress, yes. Uh, it is the Empress. Um, I get excited when uh, these kinds of good confirmation cards come out. Uh, the Empress is showing exactly that, this divine energy, that we are radiating our solar light and the universe is radiating life and light and love right back at us. And things are growing around us and in us and we are part of the process, we are part of nature, like this cat is trying to become part of my hair. Um, there is this, there is this um, very wonderful harmony between you and the world when you step into this solar energy. Now, I don't think we've attained this yet. This is what we're working toward. This is what is coming for us. And this is what we are fighting for, this Empress. This is love and beauty and joy, success of every kind, right? This is growing the best. This is you materializing your best life. From that postcard, now you are the artist, you are painting the picture, and that picture is coming to life and growing in such a beautiful way around you. It really is a very optimistic card. I love the Empress. I love it so much. Um, we are going to do an extended. Uh, if you want to stick around, the cat and I will be doing an extended reading. Just click on the link in the corner. Uh, that will give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Pisces, but for everyone. Okay. Um, new readings come out every day at 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. Chicago time. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you for your help today, teacher.